wins. Heavy rain. And dangerous flooding. Tropical storms and hurricanes bring many dangers with them. Over the next half hour, we'll look at the dangers you could face during a storm. And exactly what you need to do to properly prepare your family in order to survive. From Chris 6 News, this is Plan, Prepare, Survive. A Chris 6 News hurricane special. Sponsored by Window World and Flint Hills Resources. Welcome and thank you for joining us for this special report, Plan, Prepare and Survive. Summer in the coastal bend of Texas means grueling heat and busy beaches. It also means keeping a careful eye on the tropics for six months, starting June 1st until the end of November. Over the next half hour, we'll give you life-saving tips to prepare for whatever hurricane season has in store. Our team of weather experts will walk you through helpful ways to make a plan, prepare your family. And help you survive the stress of Mother Nature's strongest storms. In the past few years, the coastal bend has been spared from the worst of hurricane season. 2021 brought a close pass with Category 1 Hurricane Nicholas, which made landfall east of South Texas and eventually up to Sargent, Texas, along Matagorda Bay last September. The most formidable storm of the season was Category 4 Hurricane Ida. It did not impact Texas, but instead make landfall in Louisiana and left a trail of mayhem from the Gulf Coast to the Mid-Atlantic. In all, the rapidly intensifying storm became the fourth costliest hurricane in U.S. history. But just because we were fortunate last year doesn't mean we'll be so lucky in the future. In the past, we've seen our fair share of direct impacts. Carla in 1961, Beulah in 1967, Celia in 1970, Brett in 1999, Claudette in 2003, Allen in 1980, and of course, Hurricane Harvey in 2017, along with Hannah in 2020. Of these eight notable storms, six were beginning of the season storms. The first storm could very well be the worst storm. Take for instance, Hurricane Andrew. The Category 5 hurricane was the first storm of the 1992 season. It decimated much of the Miami metropolitan area in Florida on August 24th. This year will mark 30 years since that historic event, the storm that damaged the National Hurricane Center, which was relocated several miles inland to its current location on the campus of Florida International University. You really need to take each and every warning seriously. Hurricane season can be a bit overwhelming. When a storm threatens, it's a long game of hurry up and wait. Oftentimes, storms become monsters in a matter of hours. These rapidly intensifying storms can often come with a frenzy of alerts that can be confusing. The three types of hazards the National Hurricane Center will issue alerts for are a hurricane, a tropical storm, and for storm surge. Here's a simple way to understand what you should do if an alert is issued for your area. A watch means the ingredients for a storm are present, but the details are uncertain. You should watch out because impacts could begin within the next 48 hours. Now is the time to put your preparedness plan into action. When a warning is issued, it means that the storm is fully baked. Depending on the type of warning, those conditions are expected to impact our area within 36 hours. At this point, your preparation should be completed. And a newer term that came about in the last few years can really be confusing, potential tropical cyclone. This kind of storm is not a tropical storm or hurricane, but it's become obvious to the National Hurricane Center that it has the potential to be. The National Hurricane Center will issue watches and warnings for a PTC depending on the impacts expected, such as a tropical storm warning or a hurricane watch. The National Hurricane Center is responsible for tracking activity in the tropics and issues alerts when storms threaten. But our local National Weather Service office right here in Corpus Christi also plays a big role. When a storm approaches the Gulf of Mexico, NWS Corpus Christi jumps into action, taking special weather observations and providing local knowledge of the coastal bend to hurricane specialists at the NHC. To collect data, and that data that gets collected gets sent to the National Hurricane Center. They ingest that into their models, and that allows the models to give them um, the, best, the, mo the most accurate uh, runs and predictions that they use for, uh, for forecasting the track and intensity. 
When a storm threatens the coastal bend, your Chris 6 weather team also works closely with NWS Corpus Christi to keep you ahead of the storm. Whether you live on the island, in the coastal plain, or in our inland areas, there are hazards that can affect you from a tropical storm or a hurricane. The most deadly of these hazards is the storm surge, which is an abnormal rise in sea level due to the storm's winds pushing that water on shore. It is not just confined to the beaches, though. It does move inland. It can move several miles inland, depending on if you live near a bay, an estuary, low-lying area, or a river. So you want to check the storm surge inundation map to see if you are under the risk of a storm surge. Also, strong winds with the storm, yes, they're normally around the center of the storm and decrease as the storm is moving inland. But sometimes, if the storm is strong enough and it's moving fast, those strong hurricane force winds can make it up to 150 miles inland. So the highest risk for strong wind is along the coast, but it can also be sometimes a moderate risk in our inland areas depending on the strength of the storm. Widespread torrential rains associated with tropical systems uh, can bring flooding and inland areas you are included in that. If the storm should slow down or stall sometimes you can have rain for days and flooding can be a major issue. And then in the spiral bands around the storm there are embedded thunderstorms. Those thunderstorms sometimes can produce a tornado and depending on the position of the, of the system uh, all of the coastal bend is under a risk of getting a tornado and do you know what to do if there is a tornado warning for your area. So before a hurricane moves in you want to be prepared, determine your risk now and have a plan in place on what to do. Planning out an evacuation route is a vital part of the hurricane planning process. If you make the decision to actually leave when one of these storms threatens a coastal bend, it will help ease your mind, especially knowing you've already pre-planned a route to evacuate. Now, these are the signs you're going to want to watch out for right here if you plan on exiting the coastal bend to get out of harm's way. Now, the city of Corpus Christi is divided into five evacuation zones. These are the zones right here. The zone you live in will determine which evacuation route you'll take. So let's take a closer look at those. First, if you live along the immediate coastline, including Padre Island residents, Zone A1, do not take I-35 as that parallels the coastline. It is vitally important to get to I-37 and drive away from the coast. Now Zone A2, which includes coastal residents of Flower Bluff, Downtown, North Beach, and parts of the south side along Oso Creek should take SPID, then over to I-37 and out of the danger zone. Zone A3, which includes non-coastal areas of Flower Bluff and parts of the east side of the city, as well as residents to the north of I-37. If you live in this zone, I-37 is going to be the best way out of town. Now Zone B, which includes residents between Everhart and Airline down to your town, also includes residents right along Ocean Drive and parts of downtown. And in addition, it includes residents in the Cal Allen area. Residents of the south side would take South Staples, which becomes FM 2444, to Highway 286 South. From there, you'll take FM 70 West to Bishop. You can also take Weber, which becomes FM 43, out to Driscoll. Now, residents closer to Interstate 37 should just take that right out of town. Now, Zone C residents, which includes those who live in the west and northwest side of Corpus Christi, central and southern areas of the city can take airs to FM 43 towards Driscoll and out of town or simply take I-37. Now, if you make the all-important decision to evacuate the area, plan to leave early and prepare for longer than expected drive times. Take along food, water, medications, and be sure your vehicle is fully gassed up once you've evacuated. Wait for the all clear from emergency management officials before attempting to return back to your home. Being prepared in case of a storm means more than being just ready to leave. It also means making sure you're covered if your home and belongings are damaged. Coming up, we'll look at what insurance you need to protect your home. Plus, being ready for the long haul means stocking up now. Next, we'll look at what items you need to have for each person in your house. Stay with us.